Whether you're a beginner, an intermediate player, or a seasoned professional, if you practice to a metronome, there's one essential thing that we should all be doing. Friends and neighbors, welcome back to The Brownstone. My name is Rich Brown. Thank you for joining me today. It's good to be back with another lesson. And today I wanted to get into uh, the idea of practicing with a metronome. Some of the most popular videos on this channel have to do with playing to a metronome, or at least that's what you tell me. Uh, and I believe you. When I sit with a lot of my students and we do these, these metronome exercises, there's one essential thing that really needs to happen if these exercises are going to be executed successfully. And the main idea is that we have to get the rhythm into the body. So what do I mean by getting the rhythm into the body? Anna One is all set up here to help us. By the way, Anna One, uh, I get a lot of questions about what uh, metronome I'm using. The metronome is called Tempo, and I'm using it on my, uh, my iPad. That's it. So here's the deal. Anytime you practice to a metronome, you turn the metronome on, but the mistake is that we immediately start playing to the metronome. And I would advise against that because the rhythm is not in the body yet, which means uh, there's still some question as to where the beat is going to be, where your notes are going to be placed, because you're not, um, you're not totally focused and centered in the groove just yet. So when you start the metronome, here I have Anna 1 set to 80 BPM and beats 1 and 3 are turned off. So you're just going to hear beats 2 and 4, which is how I like to practice to a metronome because you just get that backbeat. So check it out. One, two, three, four. So when I start the metronome, I want to listen to it. And I really want to get the rhythm into the body. What do, what do I mean by that? Well, I'll show you. If I can start to move to the beat and feel the space between those notes, it's getting there. And now I feel comfortable enough to play along with the groove. You can see my body is swaying back and forth, which further allows me to get the rhythm in here, right? There's a question I get asked all the time. Uh, people watch these videos and they see that I'm able to carry on a conversation while playing. This is the reason why. The rhythm is in the body, so I don't have to think about it anymore. You can see my body is still swaying to the rhythm while I'm speaking to you, right? I'm not speaking to you in quarter notes or eighth notes or any kind of rhythmic grid. I don't have to think about that. I can think about other things, in this case, speaking to you, while the rhythm is still here in the body, so that when I go and take it to the bass, it's easy for me to just play along with the groove while I speak to you. So here I'm just playing beats one and three against the two and the four. And the rhythm is now in the body. I don't have to think about it anymore. And then once I get really comfortable with that, I can start to move around a little bit. So this is the main idea I want to get across in this particular lesson. It doesn't matter whether you're a beginner or an intermediate player or a pro player. Um, if you're not doing this, if you're not getting the rhythm into the body, 
this is probably the reason why you are not nailing the exercise. And here, the exercise was just to play beats one and three against that two and four, which is why I like to leave one and three off. The reason why I like to turn beats one and three off uh, is because every day of our lives, we hear music uh, that's centered around a backbeat, beats two and four. So it's a rhythm that we are used to hearing. Sometimes playing to every note of the click can sound a little bit robotic and not very musical. Whereas just hearing two and four can be really organic and allow you to groove a little bit more. Um, you know, we in the Western world, we grow up on like rock and roll and R&B and funk and soul and all that stuff. All that music is centered around a, a snare drum on two and four. So if that's a groove that we're already comfortable with, then why not play to that? That's my attitude. So again, try this exercise. Set your metronome. Turn off beats one and three if you want. You don't necessarily have to. If you're a beginner, play to all four beats. Really get used to the sound of the click on all four beats. Uh, if you're an intermediate player, then I challenge you to turn off beats one and three. And just wait and then get the rhythm into the body. One, two, three, four. Right? No matter what the exercise is, don't play yet. Feel where the beat is. Once you hear and begin to feel that space between those notes, then maybe you can do something as subtle as like moving the body back and forth. This is the one that I would suggest, as opposed to tapping your foot or, you know, nodding your head or whatever. Moving the body back and forth this way allows you to feel the larger space. Because right now, if if my tempo is one, uh, one, two, three, four, then my body is moving to the half note, the larger space. And if I can feel that larger space, I can be more relaxed inside the groove. Once the rhythm is in the body, then I can take it to the bass. And then once the rhythm is in the body, I don't have to think about it anymore and I can talk to you while I play. And that's the exercise for today. And that's it, my dear friends and neighbors. Uh, try this. Doesn't matter what level of playing you might be, uh, you might be at right now. Uh, just try this exercise and see if it helps you to really get inside the groove a little bit more. If you're having trouble playing to a metronome, this is probably why. Make sure you get the rhythm in the body before you start to play. And once you do, you'll find that sitting inside that pocket is going to be a lot easier, right? And that's that, my friends, you know what to do. All of the information uh, as far as like, like, subscribe, if you wanna donate to the channel, all that stuff is going to be in the description box below. So I don't need to go over that. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the video today and I will be back with more very soon. My name is Rich Brown. Thank you for uh, joining me here in the Brownstone today and I will see you in the next video. Peace.